Hi, I'm John. And I'm Lou, and this is a hot take. Okay, so I was uh, listening to another podcast, and some Chinese researchers just announced that they've been able to sustain fusion, nuclear fusion, for 30 minutes, and that they believe that they'll have fully sustained operational fusion by 2035. Germany is, uh, researchers are saying that they have sustained fusion for eight minutes. And I started running things through my head and I started texting back and forth with Lou. And I'm going to run you through what I'm thinking, what this might mean. So I'm going to walk you through the scenario and I'm going to talk you through what this might actually mean. So step one, we are very close to achieving AGI, our, uh, artificial general intelligence, meaning that we have artificial intelligence that will be able to kind of think on its own, learn on its own, and be able to operate. We already have AGI that passes the Turing test. So what we would have considered AGI a while ago, but the leaders in AI, Sam Altman and others, have basically moved the goalpost and said, well, that's probably not AGI. What we thought of as AGI back in the 50s, what Turing considered AGI, maybe that maybe that was, you know, a little easy, you know, giving it the easy mode. Let's go for more advanced mode. And then there's super AI, you know, super intelligence, which we're not really ready for yet. But that's coming. And so maybe that's five or 10 years out. Maybe it's less than that. I don't know. And then Lou's favorite topic, quantum is seems to be on the horizon and we're hearing much more about it even to the point that vendors like cisco are preparing for quantum and they're getting networks ready for quantum and we know that chip manufacturers are getting ready for quantum so that seems like it's right around the corner well let's talk about one more thing that i think is going on that is sure. underserved eventually whether it's this year and i'm betting on this year but it could be next year SpaceX is going to get Starship operational. And when that happens, deep space, e.g. anything beyond local Earth orbit, resources are going to get feasible. Yeah. So now we have energy, we have quantum computing, and we have a potential bonanza of physical resources, metals and carbon and, and uh, a vacuum and freefall-based manufacturing environment suddenly becomes available. Right. So where are we going? Right. And so then you start adding in the possibility of having fusion and having energy becoming much less of a problem than it is now. So there's a question as to whether fusion actually will be achievable by 2035. Because the other side to this is that fusion's always been 10 years away. No, 20. At least we're down to 10 now. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> but it, so we may not get there, you know, and, and so maybe it's not going to happen, but I want to talk about a world where in 2035, we actually do achieve super artificial intelligence, quantum and reliable fusion reactors or some sort of other energy, because what a lot of people are missing right now is that fission is making a comeback in a big way, the Overton window. And there is, we Fair never, enough. ever got to the point of truly exploiting it. And now it looks like we might be able to. So whether the fusion thing so, pans out near term or long term, we're going to have a bunch of energy. So just a quick thing. So for, for people that are not really aware, the Overton window is when something that seemed unacceptable to people becomes acceptable. So nuclear energy went through this big phase of like, oh, I don't want to touch this because we had a few bad situations and legit, they were bad. Um, but the reality is, is that that nuclear energy is actually the safest form of, of energy production on the planet. And we know how to do it. And now we have these small modular nuclear reactors that are possible. And you can actually have data centers that have their own small nuclear reactors. And you can do large scale, small scale, and we can build nuclear reactors. And people are starting to come around on it. Uh, people that are looking at it from a green standpoint 
are are happy with it. People that are looking at it from a cost sa saving standpoint. People are looking at it from I need lots of energy because I need massive data centers because I need to run my big AI data farms. Are happy with it. It's generally become a, a, a thing that we're we're happy with. So whether it's because we're doing safe fission or because we have fusion and it's cheap, whatever it might be, energy is going to become easier. And um, much more dense. And much so, more dense. So we've got energy, we've got compute, we've got communication, we've got materials. What happens? So, and then, and we have, uh, we potentially have super intelligence through artificial intelligence. That's now, five big advancements that are happening right now. Right. Now, and assuming that we do this in the right way and we don't build Skynet, then, <laughs> and, you know, and, and I, I've got my little guy here just to make sure that I'm safe and that he's, he's there to protect me. But uh, the, 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 the reality is, is that these the super artificial intelligence systems are really going to be a boon for researchers. And that's what I'm thinking. And the reason we're talking about this in, a, in an IT pod based podcast is that it's going to be our job to manage these systems for the researchers. Right. And we're going to have to be managing the systems. But I think it'll then be our job to basically give superpowers to those researchers to allow them to have effectively the staff that would have that would have given them work that the ability to, to do work that would have taken them years in days. And now they can accelerate. So if it's medical research, they can do years of medical research and they can do uh, digital twins of human bodies and accelerate the, the effects of a drug on a body and see what it would do on a digital twin in a quantum computer and say that this cancer research, this, this new chemo will affect that, that, um, that tumor in this way and see what it would do in a matter of days or hours, or that this nuclear reactor technology will operate in this way. And if we find a new cooling system and we can do that type of research and, you know, whatever it might be, or we could find new forms of telecommunication technologies. I'm just saying all these different things. We may find ourselves between 2035 and 2045 getting to levels that, that are just unbelievable in technology. And maybe I'm being pie in the sky and maybe I'm just being, you know, uh, very sh like shielded and rose tinted glasses, but maybe the, the flying car future that we were promised for 2020 is actually uh, going to be here sooner than we think. And that's what I'm actually really interested to see if all of these things do come together. Well, you know, there's a there's a couple of interesting points based on what you've said. First of all, there was an article, I believe, either it was late last week or early this week, talking about a research group that came up with a new way to produce ammonia without having to use high temperature, the existing high temperature process that's been around, invented by the Germans in the early 1900s. I believe it's the Fritz Haber process. Uh, they came up with a new catalyst, and they were able to do this by feeding 5,000 potential combinations to an AI, and the AI iterated those, came back and said, you should probably look at these 28. So instead of doing 5,000 experiments, they did 28 experiments. That's, yeah. And it worked. Yeah. They have a low temperature process for doing ammonia now. That's huge. Yeah. Right, ammonia is used everywhere. You can use it as fuel in vehicles. It produces, you know, hydrogen and uh, nitrogen, which is most of our atmosphere is nitrogen, right? So that has already happened. Um, whether or not the energy thing, I my argument for the energy thing would be we're going to get it one way or the other. The only thing that is standing in the way of this, in my opinion. John, come and smack me up however you like, is going to be people. This is going to produce a lot of churn on existing systems. And we are absolutely already seeing the effects of this. We're going mm. to be seeing this in how we offshore stuff. We're going to be seeing this in world energy shift. 
energy drives economies. And we have already seen the Middle East starting to adjust to this reality. It's going to get worse. And I'm not saying it's going to be, I would love to take the utopian example of this, but some major players are about to get their pacifier taken away. Yeah. That's going to cause issues. So here's what, what, but, I, what we're going to do what for uh, about this. Yeah. So here's what I, I want to hear from you guys. And here's what we're going to do over the next week or maybe next several weeks is I want to hear from you or, or can we completely off base? Am I, am I out of my nut? First of all, is this no way that by 2035 where we can have all of these things all hit? But do you think maybe I am right? Maybe we are going to do that. And if that is the case, what kind of advances could we expect to see between 2035 and 2045? Are we, is this something that we could see some significant medical advances? Uh, I, maybe I, am I not even thinking fast enough? Maybe we're going to see things that by, if we, this happens in 2035, then by 2036, amazing things are going to start happening. Dude, what we're going to do is we're going to take Mr. Those... Fusion for my electric cars. Right. Come on. Mr. Fusion, <laughs> are we going to see charging plates for our electric cars? Where you just, we already you know, have you, those. As you're driving along. Right. But are those going to become realities? What are, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. So send, uh, send, send us feedback. I'll give you that information in a minute. What we're also going to do is we're going to do a fun thought experiment where we're going to take all the AI LLMs that we have access to, and we're going to feed into them this whole scenario and have them go into full magic mushroom mode and 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 go into that future and predict what might happen and and what 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 could come back and then give that to us and we might actually have it go into post positive and negative mode and then Lou and I are going to debate what might happen for, based on that and say well, is this realistic or not we want to take your feedback and the AI feedback and go back and forth that probably could be a couple of different episodes so we think this will be a real fun series that we could do but we do want your feedback so send email to feedback at itsparkcast.com or hit us up on x at IT Sparkcast. You can also hit us up on LinkedIn. Um, our contact information is on the show notes where you can get access to that. Um, so we do want to hear from you there. You can also uh, hit uh, like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We uh, That'll make sure that you are getting all of these series as we go from there. But with that, we want to go ahead and wrap up. We want to turn you back to your day. Let's start the conversation though. Come and talk to us about this because this is huge and you are on the cutting edge of it.